it's lovely to be here again, and um, and just lovely to be with you. You are such an encouraging uh, group of folks. You know that um, you need to to know that that uh, you really build up each other. You're building me up. Um, we've heard some fantastic stories already this morning, uh, and God wants to encourage us, I'm sure, as well as challenge us. So just keep in mind the two stories that we heard in the God Spot. So the one, uh, the poem from David, and that amazing walk from Liz and the rest, okay? Just keep that in mind as we, as we go along. So we're thinking about life in the sun, and uh, we're thinking about a, a, a section from um, uh, 1 John, uh, but just a little recap, okay? Let's, uh, let's just recap ourselves. So we've got three letters back there, right up near Revelation, near the end of the Bible. Um, we've, so we've got one, two, and three John, these three letters, written, we, we believe, by John. Lots of discussion about that. Um, written to churches. So there's some churches across Asia there. Um, he's probably living in Ephesus at the time. Major theme running through all these uh, churches these letters is fellowship. Uh, so we're thinking about this idea of participation in God's own life and love. Um, so participation. We're thinking about um, you know, him with us, we with him, a union between us, a friendship between us. Um, uh, him coming into our lives to change us. Him coming to rescue us from the situations we're in, to lead us into a better way of life. So all of this is sort of being you know, talked about by John in that amazing sort of hotchpotchy, I'm going all sort over the place way that, that he has. In the letters, he's, um, he's talking primarily about our fellowship with God in the first letter. What's that like? What does it look like? Who is Jesus? Um, what's Jesus like? What has he done for us? Uh, what's the difference that he makes? Then in the second letter, uh, he's wanting to encourage us to be careful and avoid those people who would want to undermine that faith, who would want to pull the rug from under those uh, experiences and beliefs that you're be growing in. So he's speaking to the believers at the time, saying, don't listen to those people who want to teach uh, something different. Teach that Jesus is not the Son of God. Teach that Jesus is not who he says he is. That what he, uh, the way that he would have us live is the way that we should live. And then finally, in that last letter, uh, we look at the way that we have fellowship with one another. Um, Tom Chevis led us through uh, in going deeper in the, the last two letters there. So really, really helpful. So a major theme then has been our relationship with God and about how uh, we should protect it, watch over it, be aware that others would want to take us away from that relationship. <coughs> Tom, when he started out, Tom Chevis took us to Atoll, talked about authentic, truthful, obedient, loving, as themes running through these letters. And I want to add just one or two more as we go into this piece. We can think about confidence. John is constantly talking about we know we really know, we do know, and you can know. He's talking about something we can be confident about. He's talking about joy and, and saying that this life leads us into joy, into freedom, into fullness in, in Christ. And he's talking about victory. That as we walk in Jesus and as he is in our lives, we are able to do things. We're able to overcome uh, the difficulties, the distractions, the sin sort of... Uh, uh, what was that word? You, you got sin eater. Susan's reading a book there that she picked up from the shelf. It talk about sin eaters. And there's, you know, there, there's sin around and, and we can have victory in Jesus. So these are some major sort of themes. Um, as we look into the passage here today, we're looking at this one. 1 John chapter 5, verse uh, 12, 1 to 12. But we're not going to look at it all, and, the re and I'll explain that in a moment, okay? Um, because it would take a long, long time, I think. But if we looked into that passage, uh, it talks about victory. It talks about the way that um, um, there is victory. There's, uh, we can overcome the world. Um, and who is it that overcomes the world? Uh, it's the person who is believing in Jesus Christ. We'll try and uh, touch on that. He talks about Jesus is God. And once again, he's defending the fact that there is ample evidence around that, uh, that Jesus is who he claims to be. He is the Son of God. So once again, he's setting that out. And then finally, he, he ends this little passage 
by reminding us again that uh, God gives us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. And uh, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Believers have eternal life. Now, really, I'd like to ask you to, to let me just uh, concentrate on one verse, actually, but it comes within these first few verses. So let's read this together. And um, you'll have it in different versions, maybe. This one's the New Living Translation. So this is God's word. Everyone, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I'd like us, if we may, to concentrate just on one verse. This is the verse that I felt the Lord was uh, leading to me uh, over the last couple of months as I've had the opportunity to look at it. Um, so loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. So when I read that, um, it sort of jumped out at me. And I began to sort of say, ooh, hang on a second. <laughs> Let's have a reality check on that one. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Um, we could immediately take it to Jesus' words in Matthew 11, where he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come on friends, honesty time. What's that, what's your experience? Is his yoke easy? Is his burden light? When you hear something like that, do you sort of say, well, that's, that's a bit wishful thinking, a bit ideal. Don't think you can really live that way. You can't really accomplish that. What's uh, your own honest opinion there? What's been your experience? We know an awful lot of people struggle in life. They have some very, very hard uh, circumstances to cope with. Is your yoke easy? Is your burden light? And there'll definitely be people you'll come across who will say, no, no, my burden is, is enormous. You know, I, I'm weighed down every day. I, I, I'm, you know, I have a constant warfare going on, as it were, uh, either in relationships or in my struggle just to pay my way, pay the bills, keep the food on the table. You know, uh, this, this life is, uh, is, is a trial. It's difficult. And that word difficult comes up quite a bit. Here's an interesting quote. This is C. Uh, Gilbert, isn't it? G.K. Chesterton. He says, The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting... It's been found difficult and left untried. Let's just ponder that for a moment, shall we? The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. Jesus saying, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Walking with me is a delight. Walking with me will be so much different because I'm with you. And as we walk this way, I'm going to ask you to lay down your life. I'm going to ask you to die to yourself. I'm going to ask you to carry a cross. I'm going to ask you to uh, surrender your ambitions. I'm going to ask you to give away your money. I'm going to ask you to, uh, to do all of these things. It's an easy yoke. <laughs> Go on, love those enemies who do awful things to you. Turn that cheek again. It's an easy thing. It's an easy yoke. As you do this, your burden you'll find, well, it's ever so easy. It's a light burden. And so many people have said, no, no, it's too difficult. It's too hard. 
surely God doesn't really, really mean that. Surely um, there's a better way. Surely I can be a Christian and sort of, um, and, and have some of it, but, but, but not surely all those other bits that he's demanding. When he says commands, he says, those who obey my commands, he says, will discover that life is not burdensome. Surely not all those commands. And so there's quite a few Christians around who would say, no, it's too difficult. And there's definitely a lot of people I've met who are not Christians who would say, it is too difficult. Have you found that? And when you try to share a little bit out of Jesus and life in Jesus, they just said, no, I, I really admire you guys. I admire your faith. You know, I respect you for what you do. But no, 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 there's no way I could do this. It's too hard. It's too difficult. And there are times, if we're honest, we say the same. We say that to God. We say it to ourselves. But also, there are people, um, having said that it's too difficult, have never tried it. You know, does that? You know, that uh, they admire these Christians, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to follow that way. I'm not going to put my trust in, in, in a God I can't see. Uh, I, I just feel it's unrealistic, uh, it, unworkable. Um, how can you possibly... Um, live a life of faith. It's too difficult. I'm not even going to try. And again, if we come back to ourselves, there might be some times when we say the same. It's too difficult. I'm not even going to try. This um, trusting God. No, no, I'm going to put my trust in the doctors in these circumstances um, because it's too difficult to actually hear what God is saying and put my trust in him. Let's pause for thought for a moment. So yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's hard. There's no doubt about it that the Christian life is immensely tough, that there is costliness to following Jesus, walking his way, life in the sun. It is difficult. But just think about for a moment, what would life be like if you didn't do it? So it costs a lot to follow Jesus, but it costs more not to. Just ponder that for a moment. Ponder what life is like. You've had all those experiences. There was Liz talking about crying out for help. Lovely, wasn't it? You know, crying out for help. Um, knowing that he loves me and he's going to help me if he can. <laughs> and he does. He comes. You know, and, but if you didn't follow him, you wouldn't have that, would you? Unless it's just a gracious act of God coming to an unbelieving person, which happens. It costs more not to follow Jesus. Lots and lots of people out there will say, I, I want my freedom. I, I want to make my decisions about the way I live my life. Um, that, that's, that's, you know, and, and many of them do appear, don't they, to be uh, successful and happy people. And I don't want to knock that away from them. But ultimately, what's their life like? Well, this is uh, Dallas Willard. He's an amazing teacher. And he says a few things about this. Now, this might be extreme, you might think. I don't know. He says, to depart from righteousness, to depart from the way of Jesus, is to choose a life of crushing burdens, failures, and disappointments. A life caught in the toil of endless problems that never get resolved. Here is the source of that unending soap opera that sometimes horror show known as normal human life. The cost of discipleship, though it may take all we have, is small when compared to the lot of those who don't accept Christ's invitation to be part of his company in his way of life. So it may cost us so much, everything, to follow Jesus to have life in the sun. But we get so much more. And for those who, who have argued and rationalized and, and worked it out in their head and said, no, I can do this without him, there is day by day difficulties, but ultimately eternal difficulties as well in a life separated from <coughs> God. Moving on. 
who remembers these? <laughs> yeah, these bracelet bracelets. Um, for about two years, I had a bracelet on my on my wrist when these were sort of happening. So WWJD, what would Jesus do? And uh, the idea was very simple, wasn't it? As you live your life day by day, um, you meet challenges and circumstances, and you have to make decisions, and you're faced with uh, you know people saying all sorts of things, and the bracelet reminded you, what would Jesus do? And that was a good idea, wasn't it? And, um, you know, and I think in that way, it was, it was valuable. But there's another way of sort of looking at this. And a lot of Christians maybe fall into this trap. And I, hope, uh, I hope we're avoiding it. But the trap is, we live our lives uh, with that sense of uh, knowing the rules. Oh, yeah, the commandments, you know, the commands. All those commands we have to obey. So we, re- we remember all those rules, and uh, how this is what Jesus said. Uh, and I don't know how we're going to ha- make it happen, but anyway, he says do this. And uh, so what we do then is we try, in our own strength and with our own wisdom, in our own way, to do what Jesus would do. And we have a bit of a problem then, don't we? Because when we try to do what Jesus would do, out of our incredibly small resources our tiny little bit of love, our incredibly infant, you know, infinitesimal wisdom, we have problems trying to live the way Jesus did. So I think there's a little bit of a, um, a trap there that some of us could fall into, where we try to obey the commands outside of living in Jesus. So let's get back to that really good bit, uh, this easy yoke. What's the secret of the easy yoke? So we've got uh, a couple of cows there. Uh, they're yoked by that wooden beam that you can see going across the shoulders. Uh, with that, they can tow uh, a plow or a trailer. And uh, it's a lovely picture, and, and preachers have loved that picture, and they're just taught endlessly about the way that animals you know, learn from one another and how they support and encourage each other. It's fantastic. Um, well, I want us to take us on, okay? So we're t- thinking about this secret of the easy yoke. And we're thinking about the way that he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And I want to try and illustrate it to you um, <coughs> in a particular way. Um, lots of us have hobbies. hope you do. I always encourage people to have hobbies. Um, you know, things that uh, interest them, excite them, uh, they have fun with. Um, and I have a number, and one of them is art. I attempt to, to draw. So this is one of my pictures, and um, I did in the last year. Um, so you can guess it's a mallard, I hope. Um, and this is another one. This is a kookaburra, um, done in a particular style, an Australian artist uh, called Falasso. And you can see what he's doing there, if you can see the pictures. And uh, just to prove that it is real, there it is. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) all right, so, and and I am delighted, and I'm really thrilled to be able to do those things. And you might say, gosh, I wish I could do that. (laughs) It's a bit like the faith thing, isn't it? I wish I had your faith, you know? So you look at something like that and you say, I couldn't do that. Well, here's the truth, okay? So let's go back, take my yoke upon you, and learn from you, says Jesus, for I'm gentle and holy, uh, humble in heart. Now, the truth is this, okay? The truth is that I have been following for years now um, different online tutorials, and I've gone to workshops, and I go to an art group, and <clears throat> I've met so many people who are really good artists who know how to teach and uh, encourage you to do what you didn't think you could do. So with this one, and uh, so the artist is called Eric, and uh, <coughs> he's a lovely guy to get on with. He, he lives in Bromsgrove down there. And so I went to a workshop with him. There was about uh, 10 of us there. And he said, right, today, he says, I um, want you to have a go at this. And he put up several pictures, all looking incredibly impossible. You know, so it starts off by saying, no way, <laughs> no way am I going to be able to do that. And, uh, uh, but you can hear this, you know what's going to happen, don't you? You know, as he guides you through the steps, 
as he said, well, you need to do this first, and then I have a go at that, and I will do that, and then we do it, and it builds, and it builds, and it builds. And you suddenly d discover, I could do something I didn't think I could do. He stretched us out there, and he made us do, you know, yeah? He made us do the impossible. And wow, yeah? So they look great, but I'm not an artist. Not in a sense that, uh, that, you know, they can create things from almost nothing. You know, they can draw almost wonderful things. I'm good at copying. I imitate. You know, I like to learn things from other people and say, and of course you bit by bit modify it, don't you? You bit by bit put a little bit of you in it. But primarily and basically, it's copying. Guess what? With Jesus, we imitate we copy, we walk with him, and he says, I'm going to be that teacher. I'm going to show you how step by step by step you can do the things that I do. I'm going to show you how what looks impossible is something that is possible. I'm going to show you that something that's really hard and difficult is actually quite easy. I'm going to change your life little by little by little. The easy yoke. He says, apart from me, you could do nothing. I don't know how many times I've prayed that. You know, Lord, you say, apart from you, I can do nothing. Absolutely, you know, true. So what, what have we got to do? We're coming to the teacher with a teachable heart. We're coming with a willingness to learn. We're coming with, uh, I can't do it, but show me. And maybe I can. He says that if you draw your life from me, if you draw your encouragement from me, if you are uh, like in the poem, the person, uh, you know, the boy running along the track there, and there is dad saying, you can do it, you can do it. When you have an encourager like that in your life, Jesus, then you find yourself able to do the things you thought you couldn't do. But there it is, apart from me, you can do nothing, which is very humbling, isn't it? It knocks away at our ego, it, uh, and it, he will ask us again and again to do the things that seem impossible. Are you an armchair Christian? These are quite common. They're around, <laughs> and, uh, and they're around in all walks of life. So if you're, if you're a football enthusiast and you know the armchair referee, don't you? <laughs> The one who is telling the, you know, it should be this way and it should be that and you've got that wrong. You know, or maybe you're into politics and the armchair pol politician, I could do it better, I, put me up for prime minister. You know, the armchair person, they're everywhere. And uh, they're in all hobbies and enthusiastic, you know, anything you're interested in, you'll find armchair enthusiasts. Wonderful people, they know it all. They've got the language, they've read the books, They've, got, uh, they've been to the shows, whatever it is, they know. They've been to all the conferences, they've got the badge. And they sit back and they never actually do the thing they said that they're so enthusiastic about. One of my odd hobbies in the past uh, has been railway modelling. And um, creating a railway, is, uh, railway layout is, is it's not a toy, OK? It's not a toy. <laughs> <laughs> It is a, oh, right, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, okay, but it is a creative activity which requires a huge amount of different skills. It's wonderful. And, uh, but you get so many people who are armchair modelers. They've read the books, got the magazines, they're, 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 they've got stacks of show, you know, models to make on their shelves, but they never actually do it. And that's a tragedy, isn't it? And what we're called to do is actually do these things, not just hear about them or let other people do it. You know, there are those Christians that lean heavily on other Christians. Have you noticed that? You know, it's your faith that I'm leaning on, not mine. And God wants to say, no, 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 let me build your faith so you don't need to be that sort of person. If you look for me, says God, you will definitely find me. So here's the thing. In the 
race that we had there with the boy, in the race that you did there, yeah, it was no good, was it, saying, I'm finished. I can't run any further. I can't do any more. And God's going to constantly come to each one of us and says, but you can, and I'm going to help you. You say that you can't love those who hurt you. I'm going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to teach you in such a way that as your character and your heart changes, little by little, it is more difficult for you to dislike and hate that person than to love them. The yoke has become easy. Um, you, you're going to find that uh, instead of you hoarding money to yourself, you're going to be more and more generous and open-handed and relaxed about who supplies the needs of my life. Because you learnt how to do it. If you seek me, he says, I will teach you. If you look for me, you will find me. Throughout the, uh, the history of the church, um, there's all sorts of disciplines that have grown up. And I like this little quote, discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. One of the things about Christians is that, uh, uh, well, I learned it when I was in teacher training. Uh, it's a posh thing called deferred gratification. <laughs> don't know what that means much, but it means that lots of people around us want the instant answer to uh, a question. They want the instant thrill. They, they want the instant sort of whatever. Whereas what God is saying is, no, we're in this for the long term. And it's a case of uh, be prepared to be patient. Be prepared to learn. Be prepared to fail. I'm going to be with you. There'll be no condemnation. There'll be no pointing the fingers. There'll be no, you know, the dad didn't do that in the poem, did he? He didn't say, what a failure my son is. Get up. Go for it again. And God's calling us to a discipline, a willingness, an effort in our lives. And it's expressed in the spiritual disciplines in lots of different ways. And um, if I put the list up here, and I could put a few more up, here we go. Uh, whoops, go back one. Um, that seems overwhelming, doesn't it? Oof, no, 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 that is too difficult. But God wants to help us step by step to learn how to pray. Pray in such a way that we hear his voice. Pray in such a way that we become more confident and that we've heard his voice. Pray in such a way that we're more relaxed now <coughs> about hearing his voice. Or, or the whole idea of fasting. I mean, I don't know how many people fast, and I don't fast uh, a great deal, but I have fasted, and I have done long fasts and things. And I've learned from that that you can do it. <laughs> it's not a, a, a wishful thought or an ideal or something. It's a reality, and it makes a difference. Um, so fasting might be something you call it. Study sounds heavy work, but just reading, asking God to teach you, it, you know, being willing to... to little by little gain more and more insight and knowledge is really important. Or, or what about um, simplicity in life? How we overcomplicate life? So there's no room for God because we're so, so busy. Or what about solitude? Wow. You know, everywhere is noise. So it drowns out the still small voice of God because we don't give ourselves or him the space for him to meet with us and talk with us. Submission is a big thing, isn't it? Surrender, laying down your life. And, and that will come again and again and again and again through our lives. And he'll say, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? Uh, I can go back to uh, very young years, thinking about Christmas Carol, where it talks about the shepherd. What are you willing to give me? I'll give you my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a big thing, isn't it, for a child to, to say to God. But that, that's... You know, more and more and more, are you willing? I've been very privileged in my life because being a, an Anglican vicar for those years, um, I had a lot of freedom, which I guess a lot of folks here haven't got. You know, if you're working some of the hours that some people are working, looking after homes and children and so on, it's quite difficult, isn't it, to look at that list and think, where do I find a space? Whereas I had the freedom actually to say, okay, I, I will go off for a few days and I will pray <laughs> and I will have solitude and I will you know, meet with God. And, and that was wonderful. Not everybody can do that so freely. But your loving Jesus is going to show you how and he's going to give you 
the means to meet with him and grow in him. And I just want to encourage you, please say yes to him and let him teach you. So, look for me wholeheartedly. You'll find me. And little by little discover that I mean what I say. And when I lay out commands, those commands are not there to tyrannize or to spoil or to make your life impossible. They're there for your blessing. They're there to uh, encourage you. They're there for good life, good health, uh, and uh, a, a rippling out to the world around us. From 2 Corinthians, we're coming to a close, guys. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So that's what the Lord is doing in our lives. He's transforming them little by little by little. But he so much wants our cooperation. He so much wants our involvement. He wants our commitment. He wants our determination that actually we're going to place him first and we, we're going to seek him and we're going to uh, not let go of him until we have met with him. He wants to teach us. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So thank you for patience, especially in this heat. What kind of response? What are you going to take away from this? What are you going to do? What uh, has the Lord reminded you of? You know, that book you were halfway through reading, that, um, um, that uh, thought that you were going to get up that little bit early and pray, that, you know, those, those nudges that have come to you about, from the Lord about what to do next. Are you going to listen to that? Are you going to let him do it? Are you deliberately from today going to say, I need to go and talk to, to Mike or to any of, or to loads of people around here uh, and say, well, how do you, do you do it? You know, what, what have you learned? What did you read that was helpful? And lots and lots of folks here can uh, help each other that way. I'm going to finish with this. Some of you used Lectio 365, and, um, and this came from the 5th of July, just to finish in prayer. And then we're going to listen to a video, and then we're going to have a song. And now as I prepare to take this time, to our time here today, into the coming week, the Lord who loves me promises to bless me in the private places that others do not see. I want you to take that to heart, the private places that others do not see. That's where you're going to do most of your growing. Not out there in the public, not here on a Sunday, but in the private places where you and God meet together. And I pray that you will uh, embrace that, want that more and more to meet with him. (coughs) Isaiah 45 says, I will give you in those hidden places, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know, have confidence, that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. Let's pray this prayer together, shall we? Can we pray it out loud? Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, it's such a wonderful invitation to have from you through Jesus. Come to me. Discover my yoke is easy. Discover my burden is light. Lord, we pray that each of us, wherever we are in our journey with you, will discover the truth of that more and more. That we will delight in you and find strength in you. That we will find companionship in the tough and the hard and the difficult times and the joy-filled times. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would again and again and again come and be our teacher. 
to enable us to discover and to live in the easy yoke. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. So as we face this new week with whatever is ahead of us, we pray that you walk with us and be with us and help us to know life in you. So would you bless us now, we pray? And we ask for that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.